Hello folks, today we will be learning on how GCP works. Google Cloud Platform is currently the third largest cloud solutions provider after AWS and Azure and the way it's progressing I feel that within the short period of time it is going to catch up with AWS and become much bigger than what it currently is. So before we delve into GCP, let's start with the basics of what cloud computing is all about. So cloud computing, the capital investment in building and maintaining data center is replaced by consuming IT services as an elastic utility like service from a cloud provider. So what that means is like previously organizations used to spend a lot of its time and resource in building data centers and buying computes and buying servers and maintaining them. So that hassle or that, that task has been outsourced to a cloud provider instead of the organization taking care of it itself. So instead of buying and maintaining data, data centers, the organization would instead lease out elastic or uh, lease out services or compute instances and the entire hassle of maintaining them is taken over by the cloud provider itself. So there are various benefits and utilities in that particular approach. The most important one would be that the organization doesn't have to spend any money up front. It only has to pay for what it has used. So that makes it extremely economical for, for an organization. In fact, it makes it so economical that even a small scale industry or a small organization can actually spend more, more, more of its resources in trying to build a better, better solution rather than having to spend a lot of money in creating and maintaining the data center itself. So let us look at the various aspects of GCP. Currently GCP is there in 24 regions and each region has three zones and there is one region which has four zones. Apart from that, there are around 144 network edge locations currently. So what that means is whenever you send a request to the GCP backbone, it searches for your nearest edge location and from there the request goes directly to the GCP backbone. So this basically reduces the latency and makes sure, make sure that your connection time, your, your latency is as small as possible. And apart from that, it's currently available in around 200 plus countries. So these are all the 144 network zones. So it's spread across the it's it's spread across the globe and you can see that a majority of majority of them is currently in the US and in Europe and these are all the regions that are currently there uh, again m most of them are currently in the US and in the, and in Europe and except for one in Iowa the rest have all three zones so Iowa has four zones and the others have all three zones so a region is basically an independent geographic area that consists of zones and a zone is basically a deployment area for GCP within a region. So if you look at it pictorially, let's assume that this is your GCP network and there would be around 24 regions. So let's assume that each of these regions uh, can be displayed as a card. So you will see that there would be around 24 such cards and each of these cards would have three zones. So for example, US East 2, uh, you would have three zones and each of this zone would contain a particular GCP resource. So let's say you want to create a VM instance. So you would create a VM instance within a particular zone. Uh, it, it, it's not always the case that a GCP resource would reside within a zone. There is also a possibility that it may reside within multiple zones and it's also possible that it could reside within multiple regions as well. So these are the 
some of the resources and how they are categorized based on how they are located within the GCP environment. So a virtual machine would always reside within a single zone. However, there are resources like the app engine that would reside within multiple zones. So the advantage of that is that it becomes highly available. So in case one of the zones go down, the application would still be up because it's available in another zone within the same region. However, if you want a higher level of availability, then you can also have the same resource residing within multiple regions. So for example, the cloud storage resource can also be made to reside within multiple regions. So the advantage of that again would be if one of the resources or if one of the centers go down, goes down completely, that particular cloud storage resource that you have created would also still be available in another region. So now that you know the difference between regions and zones, let's see how these resources can be populated within your specific environment or the GCP account that you have created. So at the bottom you have your resources. You have a virtual machine, a cloud storage, app engine, BigQuery. These resources can reside within multiple regions and within multiple zones. So within your account, all these resources would be clustered together and would be within a particular project. You can have multiple projects. So you can have a project to have all your dev resources, your test resources and your prod resources and you can segregate them accordingly. So here we have a case where your prod project has all the resources that would be used in the production environment. Similarly, we have a dev and a test pro project as well. And those resources would reside within those particular projects. Now, if your organization or if your GCP account is a part of an organization, then you can further segregate the hierarchy and have all your projects reside within, within a particular folder. So the advantage of that is that you, you can have multiple folders and each of these folders can have multiple projects within them. So for an example, if you look at this particular picture, you have one particular product of that particular organization and that pr product has an hierarchy that it has a separate project within that and that particular project has a product has a dev project a prod and a test project segregated within it folders can also be segregated based on departments so you can have multiple departments and each department can represent one particular folder and the highest level would be the organization so the organization would have folders underneath that and with underneath the folders would be the projects and underneath the projects would be the resources and that's how the resource hierarchy would look like in your GCP account. Uh, again, when you create a GCP account for the first time, your account is not associated with any particular organization. So the top two levels would not be available for you. And if you want to, if you want to have access to the folder, you have to set up an organization within your account. Uh, I will give you a link on how that needs to be done. So once you log into your GCP console, what you see is would be a screen like this. So to correlate the previous, the previous slide. Uh, so once you log in, the first thing you would notice is that there is a project ID. So if you looked at if you look at the screen and the highlighted portion of it, so currently my project two eight nine zero two is basically the project within which my resources are allocated. And to get more information, you can just look at that this particular pane. It will tell you the project name, the ID, and the project number. And furthermore, if you want to know all the resources that are residing within that particular project you can see that within this particular pane. So currently my project has eight cloud storage buckets and one BigQuery data set. 
and these resources are all specific to that particular project. Also, the other thing you can note is there is also an option to open your cloud console, uh, cloud shell. So if you look at the highlighted part there, you can see that if you click on that right uppermost icon, it will open the cloud shell and that would be important for your next slide. Various ways in which you can access your GCP resources. The first way is using the GCP console as you saw in the previous slide. The other ways by which you can access GCP is through the command line interface. So there is a command line interface called gcloud that Google provides you with. You can either download it into your own machine or you can use cloud shell. So to access cloud shell, I had shown you how you can access cloud shell in the previous slide. So once you have enabled your cloud shell or once you have logged into your cloud shell, you can actually use your gcloud CLI to access or to create resources. Apart from that, you also have the, you also can use client libraries to do the same as well. So Google provides client libraries for multiple languages like Go, JavaScript, Java, etc. You could use those cloud libraries to access your GCP resources as well. So before I end this lecture, I would like you guys to open your cloud shell and to create a G cloud compute instance. Once that instance is created using the command that is shown on the screen, there are certain things that you would want to know. So you would want to know which particular project that GCP cloud, uh, that GCP VM instance belongs to. Also, which particular zone and which particular region that particular G cloud instance has been created in. So just run this particular command and see what happens and you can just discover or investigate which particular region which particular zone and which particular project that vm was created in hope this was useful for you and i'll keep providing you with more such lectures in gcp thank you